Welcome to Passion for Sound, the channel dedicated to thorough and honest reviews of headphones, earphones, DACs, headphone amps, other components and accessories. Basically everything audio related except power amps and passive speakers. My name's Lachlan and my goal is to explore and discuss all kinds of audio topics, even the controversial ones, to help us all find more enjoyment from music. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review and today something a little bit different from the usual. What I've got here in front of me are the Nanka Runner Pro bone conduction earphones or headphones. I guess whether they're earphones or headphones, I'm not entirely sure. They're kind of headphones because they go over your whole head, they don't stick in your ear canal at all. So I guess they're headphones, but they're a bit unusual because they use bone conduction to get the sound into your brain. This is a technology that I've been wanting to explore for a while, particularly having recently returned to cycling as I used to do and starting to do it again now. I liked the idea of being able to have music on the road. So getting my hands on these was really cool. It allowed me to check out if they're actually helpful and useful on the road. There's a few benefits that come with bone conduction, but also a few drawbacks. So let's jump in now and take a look at the Nanka Runner Pro. The Runner Pro have a listed retail price of 166 US dollars, but on Nanka's own website at the time that I'm recording this, they're marked down to 130 US dollars. That equates to about 170 Australian dollars. So I don't know if that's one of those permanent markdowns to make a product look like better value, or if it will actually go back in time up to the higher price. What I can tell you though is that thanks to Nanka, if you listen to this review, you think these sound like a good idea and you want to pick up a pair for yourself, they have provided a discount code to knock a further 17% off. I'll put a link down below and all you need to do is type in the code PASSION, P-A-S-S-I-O-N, to pick up a pair at a 17% reduction. But before we get around to you thinking about buying them, you probably want to know a bit about whether I think they're worth buying and I'll tell you straight away, I think in some cases they are and in some cases they're not. So let's start off by talking about the technology itself. The idea of bone conduction earphones like these is that they've got drivers sitting in the plastic section here and those sections, if I put them on for a moment, those sections sit just in front of your ear. So the idea being that these sections here vibrate the bones just in front of your ear, sort of directly below your temples, around about where the jawbone meets the skull, and so it's going to transfer the vibrations through the bones of your skull, which will be picked up by your inner ear and turned into an auditory perception by your brain. The theory and the benefit behind that is that it's going to allow you to hear everything going on in the environment around you because there's nothing occluding the ear canal. And then on top of that, there may be some benefits in terms of protection against hearing loss because you're not getting sound pressure waves pushing against your eardrum. I'm not sure if that last point's been thoroughly tested and proven, so don't buy these based on my little comment there about it potentially being better for your hearing. I don't know that for certain, and I don't necessarily think it's a reason that I would buy these, as you'll soon discover. So ultimately, the intention of an earphone or a headphone like the Nankarana Pro here is to provide you with music, but full awareness of your surroundings and or the ability to put earplugs in to block out background noise and still hear music through the bones in your skull. With that in mind, let's talk a little bit about the Runner Pro and its specs and its features. Now, interestingly, these are listed as having a 240 hour standby time. Unfortunately, it doesn't say what the listening time is. And I'm guessing that's because it's going to vary greatly depending on the volume levels used, depending on whether it's audiobooks or it's phone calls or it's music. All of that's going to change how long it lasts for. In my testing over extended periods, I've definitely gotten extended listens out of them. So I've listened to them for an hour here, two hours there, and I would say you're probably getting somewhere in the range of six to eight hours of playback in between charges. Again, that's going to vary depending on what you're listening to and how loudly you're listening to it. 
Some other things to know about is that they come with an 8 gigabyte internal memory, so you can load your music directly onto these and not use Bluetooth, or you can use Bluetooth and enjoy Bluetooth 5.0 and the low latency that provides. So that means if you are into gaming with your mobile phone, you can actually use these for that gaming and enjoy the low latency sound that should be pretty well aligned with the action on screen. It also makes for a very stable Bluetooth connection, and in my use with it, I've not had any issues at all with Bluetooth dropouts or lag or issues like that. A couple of final features that are worth mentioning is that it is IP68 rated, although on the website in one place it's IP68, in the other place it's IPX8. Now when you see the X in those IP ratings, what that means is they haven't actually measured or they're not particularly confident in the dust rating. So with IP ratings, the first number is how good it is against dust, the second one is how good it is against water. So what that means for the Nanka Runner Pros is they may or may not be good with dust. They're certainly very well sealed, so I expect there's not going to be huge issues with dust. But they're certainly rated very highly for water, right down to the point that Nanka say you can swim in these, you can bathe in them, you can shower in them, whatever you want to do, they're going to take any kind of water you like. So you can dive under the water in these theoretically and still enjoy your music. I haven't put that one to the test, it's winter here in Australia and I don't fancy going out in the bay. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is they do have inbuilt microphones and they are using the voice noise cancellation technologies according to the marketing. But in experience trying a call on these with my wife, she said the sound quality wasn't particularly good from the Nanka Runner Pro. It wasn't that it was unintelligible or really bad, but it wasn't particularly good. So do keep that in mind, they're probably not a great option for phone calls, and I'm guessing that's because the microphone is housed back in this section here. So when you put it on, the microphone is all the way back here behind your ears and a long, long way from your mouth. So don't think of these as a great option for taking calls, but they might be a decent option in a pinch. So let's talk now about a couple of the general design and ergonomics things that are worth mentioning here. We've covered off the general features, so now let's talk about what it's like to live with these day to day. The design of the Runner Pros, as you've already seen, means that this section sits over your ear, and this section here wraps around the back of your neck. That brings both pros and cons. First of all, they're very stable when they're on your head, they're not likely to fall off unless maybe you end up upside down somehow. In normal situations, whether it's walking, running, I worked up on the roof in these one day, so really there's lots of different things you can do and they're not going to fall off your head. However, if you do have any clothing on that has any sort of a high collar, I've got a jacket that I sometimes wear that's got a hood built into the collar and it did make it very uncomfortable wearing these with that jacket. Similarly, trying to wear these on my bike with my helmet on was a bit of a hassle because the helmet straps started to push and prod and move the headphone around. I did eventually get it to sit nicely, but it wasn't as comfortable as I would have liked. Putting aside the impact of accessories like helmets and clothing, the other thing that happens with this design is that I did find after extended listens, I started to get quite an uncomfortable spot just where this arch goes over the ear because it puts all of its pressure on that tiny little bit where the ear at the top joins onto the head. And so all that pressure going through that one spot is eventually going to lead to discomfort. It's also very hard to adjust this to prevent that happening or to move it when you do start to feel uncomfortable because there's really nowhere else that it can put that pressure. So ergonomically, these aren't the most comfortable IMs or headphones that I've ever worn. They're not dreadful, but it is something to take into account. You're probably not going to be wearing these for much more than an hour at a time without feeling the effects. Of course, that could be long enough to do a run, a walk, or a ride, or whatever tasks you're doing around the house or the office, that could absolutely be enough. So it's not to say you shouldn't consider these because of that, but I think you should be aware of it. One other thing I forgot to mention earlier, which I'm thinking of now that I'm holding them in my hands and feeling it, is that these charge through a magnetic charging cable. That does mean a proprietary charging cable, but it's also a part of how they stay so waterproof, and therefore it's necessary. The one other thing that you get in the box is a pair of earplugs that you can wear with the Runner Pros, and I'll talk about later what it does to the sound, but I'll also flag the fact that to me it kind of defeats the purpose of these. Unless you're specifically working in a noisy environment where you need earplugs and still want to have music or some form of audio, then I really don't think there are too many occasions that people are going to want to wear earplugs with these. If you're going to wear earplugs, you might as well wear IEMs. To me, the whole benefit of the Runner Pros and headphones like them is the ability to hear your surrounding environment. 
And so that's where for me, I'd wear them without earplugs so that I can have music or have an audiobook or whatever I'm listening to and still be involved in the world around me. Whether it's for hearing for environmental hazards, like if you're out and about on the street, which we'll talk about more in a minute, or if you're in an office space or at home where you want to be able to hear people talking to you, that's where for me, the runner pros are at their best. And in those situations, you're not going to want earplugs in because it defeats the purpose. So it's nice that Nanka have provided some earplugs. It gives you a chance to try out their sound with the earplugs, but I don't know that many people are going to use the runner pros in that way. Let's talk now about the sound quality from the Nanka Runner Pro. The first thing that jumps out when you use these is they have a relatively low maximum volume unless you put earplugs in. Now I'm guessing that's got something to do with the fact that the earplugs when you put them in are either masking some of the general background noise from the world and allowing you to hear more of the Nanka Runner Pro sound or it's somehow helping to keep the vibrations traveling through the bone. Maybe that it's now traveling across the air gap in the ear canal that's now closed and preventing it from dispersing out of the ear canal. I'm not entirely sure. All I know is that you immediately get a greater sense of bass and a better sense of volume. And that becomes really important when we start to talk about a few other factors. Overall, the sound from the Runner Pros I think is relatively enjoyable. It's a decent enough sound. It's not super hi-fi or anything like that, but it's completely fine. The treble's a little bit kind of grainy, I guess you'd call it. It's not particularly smooth, but it's also not harsh or nasty. Where it is really lacking though, is in the bass response of the Runner Pro. And that I believe is just a factor of bone conduction type earphones. There's a pretty huge roll off that's comparable to placing something like a high pass shelf at around about 200 hertz. I'll play your piece of music now, starting with the original track and then approximating what the bass response of the Runner Pros is like. I'm not gonna try and approximate the entire frequency response curve because that might also vary depending on your individual head, bone structure, etc. But what I can do is pull away the bass and show you roughly what they sound like without earplugs in. I'll play that for you now. One other thing that's really important to know about these is that even though the drivers themselves are designed to vibrate against your ear, they are still vibrating out in the open air. And that means that these do still leak sound. At higher volumes, which really means normal listening volumes, these are not much better than most open back headphones. In terms of leakage, I mean. So that means that these are probably not a particularly good option for using in an office space if you sit close to anybody and or you're listening at higher volumes. For low level listening, they'll be just fine, but not if you're listening at high level volumes like you might with IMs in your ears. And I should clarify here, when I'm talking high volumes, I'm not talking about trying to blast yourself with them because they actually can't do that, at least not with the earplugs out. The sorts of volumes I've been listening to these at, which are maybe one to two notches below their maximum volume using Bluetooth from my phone, those sorts of volumes would equate to somewhere in the high 70 decibel range from normal headphones. So they're not hugely loud, they don't get hugely loud, but they do leak like an open back headphone listening at those moderate volumes. Another little quirk to be aware of is that when you do get to higher volumes, particularly for music, they do start to tickle. And yeah, I mean tickle, they actually vibrate against this part of the head here, and it does cause a tickling sensation that's quite off-putting. It makes you want to take them off and scratch that area quite often. So there's lots of things going against the Runner Pros being an ideal solution for many situations. But don't get discouraged, there are places that these are really, really helpful. They're just quite a narrow band. To further narrow that band, there's something else I need to tell you, which is that if you are thinking about taking these outside for walking or running, they're great for that, so long as you're nowhere near any traffic. The moment you've got traffic going past, you can't hear the run of pros over the noise of the traffic. And that's not major busy road traffic, that's even in back streets. 
the sound of a normal vehicle passing, the tire noise that that vehicle will make on the road, the tire noise alone, and maybe a little bit of exhaust and engine noise, of course, is enough to drown out the runner pros. Of course, you could add earplugs with the runner pros, but at that point, just get yourself a pair of IEMs. They're going to do a much better job. To add further salt to that wound, if you start moving fast, i.e. running or cycling, the wind noise coming past the structure of the headphone and your ears themselves will also create enough background noise to drown out the Runner Pro. So even though they're called the Runner Pro, they're really not suitable for exercising in at any level of exertion. They're great for walking, they'd be great at the gym if you're just doing weights and stuff like that, because you're not going to be getting noise coming past you. Of course, at the gym, if there's music playing at the gym, that's going to kill them as well. So there's lots of places that the runner pros just don't work. And it is a bit of a shame, but it's not limited to them. This is true for any bone conduction earphone like this, where you're keeping the ear canal open. Wind noise, traffic noise, all of those things are always going to overpower an earphone or a headphone like this. So that obviously begs the question, what are they actually good for? And there's one very simple answer. They're amazing for listening to things like audiobooks and podcasts. Music at a pinch if you really want to hear something, but you're probably not going to get the enjoyment out of it because of that bass roll-off I spoke about before. And again, the argument comes up, if you're going to use earplugs, just get yourself a good pair of IEMs. So really, where they're great is podcasts and audiobooks when you're in a situation where you still want to be able to hear what's going on around you. I've used these quite a lot in the garden, not for things like lawn mowing where the lawn mower is going to drown them out. But as I said before, when I was up on the roof and I wanted to have an audiobook because I was doing a really mundane task of ripping gutter guard off the gutters, so there wasn't a lot of noise and I was going to be up there for a while. They were great for that. I listened to a couple of chapters of my current audiobook, I got the job done, it helped the time to go past, and they were just perfect. I could still hear my wife if she came outside and called up to me. I could hear the birds. It was a much better experience than being closed in with a set of headphones for that type of a task. I've also used them when I've been filming B-roll, cooking in the kitchen, cleaning up around the house, all those sorts of tasks where you might not want to be closed off from the world, but you still want to hear something. And again, most likely a podcast or an audiobook, so spoken word rather than music. But you still want to hear the world around you as well. So as you can no doubt see now, the Nanka Runner Pro are not a bad product for what they do, but it's just a product type in general that is very, very limited. I've had a very brief listen to some of the Aftershocks models. I did try to get a pair for comparison in this review, but was unable to at the time. So I've only had a very brief listen to them in a shop environment. And whilst they did sound like they were producing better sound quality than the Runner Pros here, they also are going to suffer from all of the same problems that I've spoken about in terms of wind noise, background noise, all the sorts of things that prevent them from actually being effective at what they're intended to be used for, which are things like running and cycling. I would imagine that also goes as far as swimming. I would expect the noise of the water rushing past would make listening to these underwater a problem, unless you're using the earplugs, and that may be an occasion where earplugs and having their Nanka Runner Pros are a really good choice. So keeping in mind that these have a very specific set of use cases at which they do quite well, if these are something that of interest to you, don't forget that I have got that 17% off code using the code PASSION, P-A-S-S-I-O-N, and I'll put a link down below if you want to check out a pair of these for yourself. I believe that they do what they do quite well, but they are limited by the type of product that they are. If that's still of interest to you, do check out the link. For now though, if you found this review useful, I'd love it if you'd hit like and subscribe to help you see more videos like this, and also to help YouTube know to share this video with others like you. In the meantime though, I'll leave you to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.